Greetings, I'm Professor Hobo, and welcome to another Hobo Technos product review. Riddle me this. So what looks like a Jackery, feels like a Jackery, tastes like a Jackery, but it's actually named after a Norse god. The Balder 330. Let's check it out. So here we have the cute Balder 330 power station, AKA, you got it. Solar, Solar generator. generator. Now there's a lot to talk about in this cute little package. First, it sports a 297 watt hour lithium iron battery, uses the standard 18650 cells you find in almost all the other power stations out there with some few exceptions. And they do claim the typical 500 cycles, but they say to 85% depending on use and care. So we'll just go ahead and roll with that. As for size and weight, this is actually a lot smaller than it looks, especially once you fold the handle down. It's only eight by six by six and a half inches and a very lightweight 7.6 pounds. Now the build quality on this is all PVC plastic as always. It does have the rubberized feet. It has these interesting silicon corners. They're Pro I definitely feel like silicon to me at least. And it has the folding plastic handle, which is actually kind of beefy. It feels substantial and it has the rubberized undercoating to make it easy to carry and not slip out of your hand very easily. As for the display, it's actually pretty decent. It's backlit, it shows the battery icon, percentage charge, input output watts. It's very competitive to the Jackery display, which comes on all Jackery products. As for the inverter, this sports a 330 watt pure sign inverter with a 700 watt peak with one three prong outlet. And there's no mention of this having an MPPT solar controller inside of it, so we'll test that later. We're just gonna assume right off the bat it is PWM, because that's usually the case when the manufacturer doesn't talk about it. Now the Balder 330 has three ways to charge like most other power stations. First is by AC wall, it's got this tiny little brick that it comes with. Second is from a 12 volt source from your car, truck, van, or RV. And third is from solar. They do include a solar MC4. Now the claim charge times for each of these methods is five to seven hours. And that's what they claim across the board. As for 12 volt outputs, this has three. One of the standard cigarette lighter port, 12 volts, 10 amps. And you can see they did not plug it. This does also have two five amp 5.5 millimeter barrel plug outputs, and that's the standard size for most of the world for most things. You're gonna find more 5.5 millimeter barrel plugs than anything else out there. And that's designed more for like CPAP machines and things like that, but you can plug anything in there. And the Balder 330 has four USB ports total. You have three USB-A, which are identical quick charge ports capable of doing 12 volts up to one and a half amps, 18 watts total. Now that's a combined 54 watts that you can pull out of these three USB ports at once. And then there is one USB-C port, which is also just a quick charge port capable of 18 watts. This does not have a power delivery port. And as for other outputs, you do have a five watt wireless charger on the top. So you basically can just set your phone there and it will charge overnight. Other features, this has a two watt lantern style warm LED light on it, which can also do SOS in case I guess you're trapped on a deserted island. As for the warranty, it does say 12 months on Amazon, but if you go to the manufacturer's website, which is to go power, you can double that to 24 months just by registering your product. And of course, I took the Boulder 330 into my secret lab where I performed all kinds of crazy experiments on it. First, we did the battery capacity test. Final results, 266 watt hours, 25.8 amp hours, total discharge three hours, 18 minutes. Now, as you can see, we got a whopping 266 watt hours out of a claim 297. That's an impressive 90%. Most power stations are in the 70 to 80% range, so you're actually getting more usable battery out of this than you are most other power stations. Now let's check out the DC output test. So 12 amps at 11.2 volts, 135 watts. That's actually not too bad for a little power station like this. Let's see what happens if we go to 13. Oh, right around 12.7, 12.8, it crapped out. So 12 amps, 
pretty good. Again, impressive because we're able to pull 12 amps out of a 10 amp rated cigarette lighter port. That's a little bit more than a competition. Now, here's the downside. Does this have any 12 volt regulation circuitry? No. And what that means, for those of you that are new to the channel, is that if you don't have a regulated 12 volt output, as the battery discharges, the voltage coming out of this area comes down along with it. So it gets to the point where it goes down to in the nine volt range and a lot of 12 volt appliances will not run on something of that low of voltage. A very good example of this is a 12 volt compressor refrigerator, which they almost all require at least 11 to 11 and a half volts to run. When this gets down to like 50%, that refrigerator is just gonna shut off. So this does not have the 12 volt regulation circuitry in it. And next we did the pure sine wave check. Let's do this just on low with no heat. We're only pulling 62 watts. The sine wave does look like it does change slightly. It still looks pretty good. Now let's check out the inverter capacity test. All right, let's go ahead and see if we can run at least three minutes at 350 watts. Assuming this survives this test. Because I tell you what, it's not smelling very good. But we're here to break stuff. Dave's playing 330 watts. I want to push 350. So if it can't do that, it should at least overheat and shut down and not burn up. If it burns up, well, we end the test. Now we're caught up here on three minutes. It doesn't smell great, but it's not on fire. That passes the test. All right, so while we're still going here, we're still pulling 340 watts. Let's turn this thing up slowly until it shuts down. See where it stops. 350, 360. Right there at 360, it shut down. So there's not a lot of overhead on this, but it's at least 330 watts, like they said. That's not good. Did I just blow up another power station? It's possible it's just overheated, so I'm gonna go ahead and let it cool down. But this is exactly what happened to the Suoki, what, an hour ago? I'm hoping I didn't just blow up the inverter on this too, because that means that I found a way to kill power stations, like, easily. It seems like no matter what, I can just blow these things up. Why? It's just a heat gun. It's like a hair dryer. Like, what's the, what's the big deal? Why is this, I, undu, I understand it's an inductive load, but why are these things so weak? Why are they so weak? As you can see, there's a little bit of mixed results here. Well, the inverter does support up to 330 watts, which is great, that's what they claim. I did actually burn up the first Balder 330 with my solar degenerator heat gun. And that's, I think, gonna be its official name because it's killed four power stations so far. This was one of them. But I did contact the representative at Balder and they sent me another unit to test and they told me this is not designed to run inductive loads. So don't try to run anything with a heater in it or a motor because this inverter just isn't designed to handle those kind of loads. So take that with a grain of salt because I don't think most of you are gonna run a hair dryer or a heat gun or anything with an actual electric motor in this, including that 12 volt refrigerator I talked about because this simply won't do it and you could potentially burn out the inverter on this. So stick to the basic things like charging your phones, your laptops, your drones, CPAP machines, stuff like that that doesn't have a heat or inductive style load. And this should be fine for you. Pass-through charging. This is something everybody always asks about. Well, this has pass-through charging, but let's see what type. So does the Baller 330 support pass-through charging? We are hooked up to a 12 volt load here. I'll turn on the USB ports and I'm turning on the AC inverter. Let's go ahead and plug it in. It beeps. How about that? When I plugged it in, the AC inverter turned off. So this only has DC pass-through charging, meaning sure, you can still charge this while you run a DC load, like a 12 volt appliance or charge with USB, but you cannot run the inverter at the same time you're charging this. So this only has 
DC pass through. But can it simultaneously do AC and DC at the same time? I'm doing it right now. So yes, it does actually support AC and DC output simultaneously. Max charge rate test. Okay, 10 volts. Ah, oh, at 10.6 volts, we're immediately getting 52 watts input. So let's take it up to 13.8, 52 watts input. Let's go up to solar panel voltage, 18 volts, 52 watts input. 21 volts VOC for most 12 volt solar panels, 52 watts. <laughs> it's getting a trend here. 25 volts would be a 24 volt system, 52 watts. Let's see what our upper limit is here. Oh, there we go. It just conked out around 26. So 28 watts it conks out, so that's its upper limit. So you have 52 watts hard-coded, obviously, into this thing from about 10 volts to 28 volts. That's a pretty wide range, but there's really no working room here to make it any faster. This came with a very interesting result. It's 52 watts across the board, no matter what you do. You can use this, you can use this, you can use this. You can harness the power of the sun, 1.21 gigawatts from a lightning bolt. You can plug a nuclear reactor into this. 52 watts is it. That's the minimum, that's the maximum. It's a very interesting result. But that actually means that this is limited to charging in six hours. They do claim five to seven hours on the website and on the product page. However, if you do the math, which is 300 watt hours divided by 52 watts, you get roughly six hours, just under six hours. So that's the fastest this is ever gonna charge. So I hope you're not in a hurry to charge this thing, especially from solar, because it's gonna have to sit outside at least six to eight hours every day. And again, it doesn't matter if you're using a 100 watt panel or 1,000 watt panels. So is this MPPT or PWM? This is a fixed wattage PWM controller with a very wide 10 volt to 28 volt range, which is one of the widest ranges I've seen in a small power station like this that actually produces the same result across the board. Now the USB output rate check. It's pulling 3.2 amps at five volts, so it's pulling an easy 15 watts. It's not showing anything up here. Even if I press DC, it says zero watts. So why is it not registering the amount of power coming out of the USB ports? I'm clearly pulling 15 watts and nothing is showing up on the screen for the amount of power coming out. Okay, I am now pulling 15 watts from the USB-C port, zero watts. Let's go ahead and power this thing off. It's not registering USB output at all. The power is definitely going down. I've actually seen it go down a percent. So it's registering the battery level, but not the wattage coming out of the USB. That's really fascinating. Now we got 18 watts from the USB output rate check across all four ports, which is exactly what they're rated for. Now timeout under small loads. I actually left the USB on by accident overnight and I had this sitting in the camper and I came out and it was still on. So there is no automatic timeout for this. If you leave the USB turned on and with nothing plugged in, you'll eventually kill the battery. So be aware of that. This is gonna be a positive feature for some of you who like to run little one watt USB fans and lights. And on the other side of the fence, there's gonna be people who hate that feature because they're gonna to forget to turn it off and they're gonna come back to it and it's gonna be dead. So what do I like about the Baller 330? Well, it's a great all-in-one little package. There's a lot of features packed into this little box. It's small, it's light, it has the folding handle, it's got a large inverter for its size, a bunch of high-power DC outputs, wireless charging, uh, decent but not really show-stopping USB charging, and we can't forget about the lantern-style light, which of course is its biggest selling feature. It's just generally a really good all-in-one, well-rounded package at a competitive price. So what don't I like about the Boulder 330? The fixed, slow 52 watt charging is a real bummer, but on the outside it'll charge just as fast from a near dead lead acid battery as it would from a nuclear power plant, or in other words, a 100 watt solar panel. And for those that like to charge from 12 volt sources, this really blows away the jackery in that department because you could charge this from an almost dead battery at 52 watts where the Jackery Explorer 240, which is the competitive product to this, would probably only charge at 20 to 30 watts.
from that same low voltage. Now, if Balder added 12 volt regulation circuitry to this, it really would be a Jackery killer. The lack of 12 volt regulated ports on this is gonna scare some of you away. Then again, if you don't use any 12 volt stuff, this might not be a big deal at all to you. But just note, if you plan to run a 12 volt compressor refrigerator, you can't do it on this product. And I also wouldn't run a 12 volt CPAP machine directly off of this, unless you only plan to draw it down about halfway. A lot of the CPAP machines will stop working or won't work properly if the voltage drops too low on their input. So check with your manufacturer. Yours might be able to run DC on this down to nine or 10 volts where others can't. But you could still run a CPAP machine off the AC inverter, it's just less efficient. And finally, the lack of any kind of power delivery port is a real bummer. While it does offer 18 watt quick charging, which is fine for most tablets and phones, you can forget about running something higher powered like a MacBook or a MacBook Pro, at least directly from the USB output. Of course, you can still use the inverter to do, a, you know, to charge a laptop of pretty much any size. That won't be a problem. But the modern standard now is to charge things using the power delivery port, usually a 45, 60, or 100 watt port. It's kind of like standard fare nowadays. That allows you to run a lot of DC gadgets like MacBook Pros directly from DC power, which makes this battery last far longer than it would if you tried to charge from the inverter. And also note the five watt wireless charger on this is more of a token feature. It's not really great. It will charge your phone or your tablet if it has wireless charging built in, but it's probably gonna take overnight. So don't think you're gonna be able to throw your phone on here in an hour, pick it up fully charged. That's probably not gonna happen. So you guys obviously wanna know now, what's the price of the Boulder 330? Well, its current retail price on Amazon is 229, which is very competitive. But we should have a discount code for you in the description below. So I did contact the manufacturer as of the recording today of this video. I haven't heard back yet. But when we originally were talking about doing the review on this, they did say they were gonna offer a discount code for Amazon. So look for that below in the description. Hopefully by the time this video posts in the morning, that code will be there for you. If not, just come back a few hours after the video posts and look and see if I have the code there for you. And if there's no code, I'll write down there no code because sometimes these manufacturers change their mind last minute and decide not to offer a code. But for you guys, I always ask for a code. So who is the main competitor for the Baller 330? Well, I think it's very obvious that they're going after the Jackery 240 in this segment. However, the Baller 330 has way more features than the now aging Jackery Explorer 240. This has wireless charging, QC USB ports, a larger battery capacity, a larger inverter. Now the upside and biggest selling point for the Jackery 240 over the Baller is that it does have that regulated 12 volt output. So this is perfect for running a small 12 volt compressor fridge or CPAP machine from 12 volt or anything that requires that steady voltage from a 12 volt port because this one you can drain all the way to dead and the last watt you get out of this will be at 13.2 volts where this one, once you drain it down, it's somewhere in the low nine volt range. So that's the major difference between these two. This does hands down beat the Jacker Explorer 240 on overall features. And not to mention, this actually starts off at a much lower price, 229 versus 249. But hopefully I'll get a discount code for this and we'll drop the price even more for you. So what's the competition for price? Now this is in the same ballpark for micro solar generators as the RAV Power, which I reviewed recently, and the Suoki S200, which I reviewed last year, along with the Rock Pals 250. They all fall around that $200 price range. There is the newer Rock Pals 300 watt for around the same price as well. So when it comes to price versus features, this actually stomps all over the competition, beating all those products I just mentioned. Now what about market focus? Who is this product really aimed at? Well, it's aimed at the entry level consumer, somebody who's just starting out with portable power stations, solar generators, and needs something that's very portable, very lightweight, very easy to store with the folding handle. You can slip this in just about anywhere in a van or an RV or even if you live in a car. And it's something that you pretty much want to use for low end stuff. Like you want to be able to charge your phone, your tablet, your drone, your cameras. Um, if you want to run AC appliances, it has to be a low end appliance. It doesn't have a heater or a motor in it. Um, something like a computer. You can charge a computer or a laptop from this no problem. 
uh, electric bike. If you have an electric bike, you can carry this with you to extend your range. You can run game consoles, you know, Playstations and Xboxes. As for televisions, you can easily run a 12-volt TV off of this and computer monitors, of course. And you can also run a pretty big screen TV as long as you keep it under that 330-watt range on the AC inverter. And like I mentioned earlier, this will not power a 12-volt compressor refrigerator. If you do want a power 12-volt compressor fridge, you're going to want something more like a Jackery product, specifically something larger than this. You're probably going to want the 500 or 1000 or one of the larger Blue Eddy products because refrigerators take a lot of power. And something like this would only get you by a day anyway. As for recommended solar panels to use, I recommend an 80 to 100 watt panel. Now that's any panel with an eight millimeter input such as this. this is the same that Jackery uses, which means yes, you can actually use the Jackery Explorer 100 watt panels as I've shown in my thumbnail, plug it right in the eight millimeter and charge up at the maximum 52 watt rate, probably even on an overcast day such as this. You can also use the Suoki Rock Pals and Bowden's 100 watt panels. Those are all good selections. In fact, all my recommendations for solar panels are on my website, hobotech.tv slash Amazon. Go down to solar kits and you'll be able to see all the portable solar panels, including some rigid glass panels if you want to take that route. They're all down there and I even have discounts on some of them for you. And now for a fun bonus fact. The name Balder actually comes from the Norse god of light and sun. Pretty cool for being a solar generator. But Balder is also the son of Odin. And I'm not sure how that happened because I fixed Odin when he was six months old. Hmm. So if you're interested in the Boulder 330, look for the link below to the Amazon page where you can pick it up, hopefully with that discount code. Look for that in the description as well. I'll also pin a comment after this video has been out for a while. You can find the link to the Amazon page below in the description along with hopefully the promo code that'll get you some money off. Thanks for watching. If you learned something today, don't forget to give me a thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you, you know, know what, what to, to do. do. That's it for now. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. Oh, you son of a bitch. I have to pick the one spot where there's ants everywhere. Yeah, I really love recording out here in the desert. I'm glad that's gonna be over with soon. So what looks like a jackery, feels like a jackery, tastes like a jackery, was actually named after a Norse god, the Balder 330. Let's check it out. <laughs> Greedy. <laughs> that part makes me laugh. That's, that one's good. It's nice and clean now, that's for sure. It actually does taste like a Jackery. RV Golf Gun, Z Foxfire.